Today's project is the installation of an electric fuel pump solely for priming purposes. The reason I'm going to install one is because today's gases evaporate out of the carburetor just from the car sitting. So the car is sitting about six days and let's go to try to crank it. He was just cranking, 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 cranking. The fuel pump I'm using is from Airtex and I selected it because this type of pump will allow fuel to be able to be pulled through it even when it's not running. To show this in action, I'm hooking up a vacuum pump to it. As I pump, I don't generate a vacuum suction unless I happen to place my finger over the fuel input to block the line. This pump is perfect for my carbureted application because it only builds two and a half pounds of pressure. That means I don't need a fuel pressure regulator. Here's everything necessary to do the job. You see I've got a Wix inline filter in the middle and off the right side is a bracket I'm gonna show you how to make. It starts off as an antenna bracket. I slice the side off of it and then I adjust it with the hammer to make an L bracket. And that is how it hangs underneath the car with a little bit of rubber insulation added to keep the noise down. To get power to my pump, I'm relying on a 9 amp fuse circuit that all Buicks included in 1964 for a power antenna. In order to switch the fuel pump on and off, I repurposed a momentary switch that would normally be in a cruise control hauser. This switch will provide power whether it's pulled forward or backwards, but in my application I'm going to set it up to where it's pushed in like the other switches. To get power from the switch to the fuel pump, I'm going to go down the passenger side. In these cars, there's a wiring channel already built in that I'm gonna put some 14 gauge wire through. Then I'm gonna pull it through the dash until I get up to the switch where the output is hooked up first. And then that input, that power antenna switch is plugged in. I'll get everything nice and bolted down and then I will put the dash panel back together. The wire then goes through the same hole that the fuel sender uses so that I'm able to get from inside the car to underneath the car. Once the wire has been pulled through the hole carefully, I'm gonna push this original factory grommet back down to get a good seal and keep any road liquids from getting up in the trunk. I'm gonna install the pump on the passenger side frame rail. I'm actually reusing one of the holes for a bolt that holds the suspension bump stop. Once this is tightened down, I'm connecting the 12 volt DC switch power from the front of the car through butt connectors for serviceability. Here's a quick tour of the installation. We're going through that Wix inline filter as soon as we come out of the tank. Then we've got that new fuel pump. Then we go into existing line which transitions to a metal line which takes it all the way to the engine of the car. I've got the electric fuel pump installed now. So let's hit the accessory switch to get it primed. Now let's try to start the car. Hey, two things before we go. The first is I wanna recommend that you get some of these dormant fuel quick disconnects as they call them. It's a little bit of tube that is able to go exactly where that electric fuel pump goes if it should fail. It's about $20, but it's cheap insurance if you need to bypass that electric pump. The other thing is be sure to check your work after a few weeks. After about six weeks, Sherman had a leak underneath him and I look and it's a drip of gas. And it turns out that the fuel line just needed to be tightened up a little bit and it was good to go, but you don't want to mess around with fuel leaks. Thank you so much for watching.